Hi, folks. Welcome back to round two here today. We're going to have a little bit of fun. I told you I had something special planned here for today, and um, I guess none of you ever even figure it out. We're going to talk about pawn shops. You know, pawn shops have been around for thousands of years. They emanated and started over in China. And basically, the pawn shops were designed to help those people that could not uh, get into the banking system. So currently, pawn shops in the United States of America service 20, uh, 15 to 20 percent of all Americans, and they are the people that are forgotten. They're not in our financial system. So we're going to be talking about that. But pawn shops are also an excellent economic indicator. Pawn shops are a good indicator of economic conditions. When pawn shops see more demand for pawn loans, coupled with a drop in retail sales, it's typically a good indication the economy is slowing down. On the other hand, demand for pawn loans typically decreases, declines in a strong economy and retail sales increase. So the history of pawn shops goes back, goodness, thousands of years, and we're going to be touching on that. The three balls that you see up there actually came from a family that um, it was part of their, um, their coat of arms. So what we're going to be talking about is the, is the history of pawn shops and how they function in terms of real money for folks that cannot get into the financial system. So let's suppose the financial system that currently have breaks. Is that going to affect the poor people? Are they still going to be able to go into the pawnbroker and, um, and get what they need and change their money out and maybe post their, their silver or their other assets as a loan? Absolutely, sure. So I can see us going back to this type of thing until... Um, until uh, sort of the uh, uh, things level out, even out. Uh, the removal of the old currency provided to us by the Bank for International Settlements and the, the reintroduction of the gold standard, silver standard for the people. I don't think it'll be that tough. Uh, I think that um, uh, it'll be fairly seamless. Keep in mind, there's over 8 billion people on the face of the planet, so it can't be that disruptive. And these people, I believe, are know what they're doing. So we're also going to be talking about some of the leftover questions that we had from uh, from our mailbag. Had some really good questions like what are the key differences between investing in silver versus other precious metals like platinum and gold? So I did some calculations and we're going to be talking about the gold silver ratio, which is currently over 80 to one. Means that you could buy 80 ounces of silver for one ounce of gold or it would cost you 80 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. When the mining ratios are currently seven to one, I don't think you're making a really good move buying gold at this point. Now, it doesn't matter. You have the funds to go out and buy the gold. The bottom line is, is you could be buying almost seven or eight times the amount of gold, excuse me, the amount of silver. So as I'd shared it with you all before, I saw what was happening and I got out at the, the top of the market at 120 to one. So it was 120 uh, ounces of silver got you one ounce of gold. So I took the gold in and swapped it out and they netted at 107. So uh, it was a pretty uh, it was a pretty good haul. Somebody else said they did the math, but uh, that's not the whole stack, folks. Uh, but at any rate, let's not go down that rabbit hole. But anyway, in terms of metals, I think we need to do is again is go back to the Constitution. What does the Constitution tell us is money? Okay. Now, granted, you got to look past the fact that in 1965 they took the money out of our money. But it, it, you're seeing right here, nothing but gold and silver coin and payment of debts. And, uh, and obligations are to be used here in the United States. Nothing is in, uh, provided fiat by, uh, by some kind of private company, that even though it has issued and does issue all the other private currency, uh, countries' currencies. So next question here is, how does inflation affect the value of silver compared to other assets? Well, why don't we talk about what inflation actually is? Inflation is an increase in the money supply. Earlier, we were talking about the differences between Austrian monetary economics and uh, Keynesian monetary economics. And those two uh, bodies of, of economic theory, I'm going to read to you right now, because I think as we talk about the BRICS, you're going to understand why they're so upset and why they want to get away from our government controlling the world reserve currency and therefore also controlling the, the trade and the currencies around the world, as well as their, their way of lives. So here I'm going to read you the Keynesian economic edict, okay? Keynesian economics is a macroeconomic theory developed by economist John Maynard Keynes, which advocates for government intervention in the economy to stabilize economic fluctuations and promote growth. Does this sound like a fair and open market? Does it sound like which government is, is doing the, inter the intervention and whose economic growth are they stimulating it for? Is it possible that 
It's just been stimulated for the United States. Is it possible that we've been enjoying in a way above average standard of living because maybe we've repriced the currency, we brought it all here, and we've brought demand in five and 10 years in the future into today. So we've consumed tomorrow's consumption today. We hadn't allowed our society to grow into what would be required in order to be able to, uh, to, uh, to afford those types of things. So for instance, some people, they got into very, very nice neighborhoods because the interest rates went down and people sold their homes. They were retired executives or whatever, sold their homes and somebody else got in at a very low interest rate. So now what used to be a neighborhood full of, uh, you know, executives and everything, you're finding out other people were able to move in now and get more of a blend. So um, those people that would choose to try to pay more to be in a particular area, uh, well, now it's all sort of blended together, okay? Sort of like a little bit of socialism here. So at its core, Keynesian economic emphasizes the role of aggregate demand in driving economic activity. It postulates that during times of economic downturn, such as recessions or depressions, government spending and monetary policy should be used to stimulate demand and boost consumption and investment. Keynesian theory also advocates for counter cyclical policies such as increasing government spending or cutting taxes during periods of economic contraction and reducing spending or raising taxes during periods of inflation. Is this a free market? Is this what capitalism is all about? It sounds to me that this is a lot of intervention going on by government people. And I think for the most part, they're really not all that trained. Look at the mess that they've done as far as our, our society is concerned. The dollars, the currencies aren't worth anything. We're being taxed in, to smithereens. And as I'd said with you before, there's over 151 taxes on one loaf of bread. The Keynesian economic model has got to go. But you decide that. Additionally, Keynesian economics supports the use of monetary policy tools. So the market can't work itself out. we got to have the people in government sort of pushing this way and doing that way. Well, how are they doing that? How about let's take a look at the plunge protection team, the PPP. I hope you're taking some notes. The Plunge Protection Team, also known as the President's Working Group on Financial Markets. The President can increase or decrease the value of the stock portfolios simply by increasing liquidity to make the stocks go up or decreasing liquidity by making the stocks go down. And we're seeing that happen in the Federal Reserve reverse repo operations right now. Whereas $2.9 trillion used to be pumped into the economy each and every day, now we're less than $450 billion has been pumped in. That's a heck of a decrease. And what was the cause of the Great Depression? A lack of liquidity, a withdrawal of funds. So people didn't have the money to pay their taxes. People didn't have the money to make them, their payments on their farms or feed their kids. Matter of fact, folks, it got so serious. There were people called clay eaters. And these are people that didn't have the money to feed their kids, so they fed them clay. Now, obviously, they got worms and other kinds of parasites, but it was something to be able to put in their stomachs. And the way you would know that these people were clay eaters is because they would have an action type of complexion and the skin would be a little bit different color. This is what happens, folks, when you don't have real money. Like the table fools of currency that I have over there, your dollar is going in that same wastebasket. It's only a matter of time. And some of you are saying, well, geez, when is it going to happen? Does it really matter when? Okay. I mean, do you buy insurance the day before you die? You buy insurance on your house the day before a fire burns it down? We don't know when these things are going to happen. But we do know the dollar is in trouble, and we see that because we're seeing vacant office buildings. We're seeing the price of groceries spiking. We're seeing mismanagement in the, as far as the, the, uh, the bond market is concerned. We're encouraging, we're actually seeing right now an inverted bond curve which means that it costs less to borrow money for 30 years, true, than it, borrows, it costs to borrow money for 10 years. Does that make any sense? It should cost more to borrow the money over 30 years than 10 years, right? So the short-term interest rates should be, should be uh, lower than long-term interest rates. That's a normal yield curve. We're in what's called an inverted yield curve. So why is it that money would be less expensive to borrow for 30 years, knowing that you could prepay it, OK, then it is to borrow it for six months or one year or two years. You answer those questions. OK, I think it's a big bowl of snakes and we got to get them out of the, out of the kitchen. So here we're going to talk about Austrian monetary economics. I suggest that you guys, if you'd like, send me an email or text or whatever you want to do and ask for a copy of this report, because this is really the crux, as I told you a couple of times before. This is the crux of the whole issue. We have Austrian monetary economics which is replacing Keynesian monetary economics. That's what's happening. And Keynesian is losing, all right? 
And when you know they're losing, because the prices keep going up, the yield curve is inverted. They can't get unemployment under control. They're lying about the employment numbers. Take a look. Do you really think employment grew by 300,000 jobs? Do you really think the stock market valuations are justified for the highest stock market in the in the world? Right? I mean, not in the world, but in our country? Has ever had? The Dow's never been this high? Economic activity is that high? People are fully employed? No, come on. Austrian monetary economics is a school of economic thought and emphasizes individual choice. Individual versus government. You pick. Okay. Free markets. Free markets versus controlled markets with Keynesian. You pick. Limited government intervention or full government intervention. You pick. Austrian monetary economics is limited government intervention, mainly simply to make sure that people play by the rules. You don't tell somebody something and sell them something else. It's rooted in the principles of Austrian economics, which prioritizes subjective value of nature, the importance of entrepreneurship, that's where the growth comes from, and the understanding that economic phenomena are driven by human action rather than centralized planning, which is one company trying to plan for the entire world. Why don't we let everybody plan their own? Okay, Maybe in some countries, some fashions are, are, are vogue and they're not in other countries. Let each country do their own thing. It'll work out. Austrian monetary economics is all about God's money. It's all about free markets, about capitalism. It's allowing the markets to, to, to operate unimpinged, un, unmanaged, unmanipulated. That Wouldn't that be nice? We haven't seen this kind of uh, economic activity for over 170 years because they've been manipulating the price of gold and silver that long. Okay, and they've been doing it through what are called naked paper shorts. So Austrian monetary economics advocates for sound money backed by tangible assets such as gold and silver rather than fiat currency subject to manipulation by central banks. We'd all have to agree that the time that we have on earth is finite, right? There's only a set number of hours that we have that we can work. And that would be trimmed by the number of hours we have to sleep, number of hours we're going to spend with our children, number of hours we're going to take care of ourselves, time off for health issues, taking care of yourself, spirituality, whatever. Okay, so we don't need a centralized company, the Bank for International Settlements, providing their crap currency all around the world that isn't backed by anything. And they used to back it with muscle. They used to back it with bullets and guns. And that's why they don't want us to have bullets and guns, because we're the last holdout. If we fell, the whole system would fall because nobody can protect themselves. We in the United States, we can protect ourselves and we are protecting ourselves. We have a voice and we're raising that voice. People like Marjorie Taylor Greene are standing up. People like uh, Gary Webb, Weber, uh, David Weber, the, the guy that wrote the book, um, The Great Taking. He's standing up. He testified in for Congress I mean, before the Tennessee, Tennessee legislature. The fact that you don't own the dirt under your head. You don't own the land. You own the real estate, but that's not the land. You don't own the stocks because you don't have a QCIP number. You don't own the money because there's no silver left in our money anymore. These are the things that this, this fellow is, is pointing out, and he pointed it out to the, to the, um, uh, to the Tennessee legislature. So Austrian monetary economics emphasizes the importance of preserving purchasing power and warns against the dangers of inflation caused by excess money creation. That's what causes inflation. So if inflation is going to cool, what does that mean? Going to let it boil off? So we create inflation. What you're doing is you're, you're, you're adding water to a pot of soup, and you're going to expect everybody to work just as hard with less calories. So I can afford to shed a couple, but uh, maybe some of you can. <laughs> so which school of economic theory do you subscribe to? Austrian monetary economics, free market, or Keynesian economics, where it's a completely managed market. Now, the managed market doesn't stop with just what the, the price, what the stocks and bonds are costing. No, they get involved in the forex markets, the the foreign reserves, the foreign credit, uh, foreign currency markets, through what's called the Exchange Stabilization Fund. And with this fund, it was hydrated by a guy by the name of Dr. Leon Wanna, W A N N A, and he hydrated this with two trillion dollars that he got from helping to bankrupt the Soviet Union during the Cold War. This money was put into account to be used by then Bill Clinton in order to uh, manipulate or make the dollar more favored than other currencies. Are you starting to see why the BRICs get a little upset at this? So we were able to create the currency on a keyboard, okay? Fingers on a keyboard. And if any one other country wants those currencies, like suppose they're going to trade sugar for it, okay? They're going to trade sugar 
for the, the, the made up currency that we make. What's involved in growing sugar? Well, first you got to find the, the area, right? You got to make sure it's habitable for, for sugar plantation. Then you got to get permission or buy the property. Then you have to till it and put the seeds in the ground. You got to wait and water it. Okay. You got to grow the crops Then you got to harvest it. You got to refine it, then put it in a ship and say, okay, we did our job. Can we get paid now? Yes, fine. They, and they just create it out of a thin air on a keyboard. Is that a fair exchange? Is that a fair medium of exchange? That's why the BRICS are so upset. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Those were the core holdings, core company, the countries that got together with this. But now we're over 160 countries have all signed up and said, you know what? We're tired of the United States doing that too. They're the only country that can create their currency on a keyboard and not have to work for it. We do have to work for it. So what do you think is going to happen to our lifestyle over here? I hope you all are thinking. Now, I know some of you take a look at these uh, YouTubes and you say, oh, geez, that's that's an hour long. I don't want to spend an hour. You know what? If you went to a class in college and you went to a class on a Tuesday, Thursday, you had an hour and 15 minute class with no breaks. Think of this as your catch up time. OK, think of this as your catch up time. Forget about the amount of time it takes. These are things you should have been taught a long time ago and you weren't. Or if you were taught, you were taught incorrectly. Or if you were told or you were lectured to or whatever else, it was lectured to with an agenda. There's no agenda here. The only agenda is, is to get you as wealthy as possible so that you're ready to have a decent size estate to be planned so that you don't fall pitfall, you don't fall into the pitfalls of making uh, mistakes such as accidentally disinherited grandchild or causing unnecessary fights among beneficiaries by not including something as simple as an interorum clause. So let's go to the next thing. How does geopolitical instability impact the price of silver? Well, See, when, when, when there's a lot of instability, what's happening in China right now, the people in China, they're rushing out of their currency. They're going into jewelry stores. They're going onto WeChat. They're going into um, um, online brokerages. They're going to the SGE, the Shanghai Gold Exchange. And they're taking their currency out of the, their, their country's uh, demise, and a country's hand, and they're putting it in the metal. And why them? Because they've already seen a currency reset, once burned, twice shy. The thing here in the United States is there is no one alive that is seen in the United States that has seen a currency reset. So when this hits you, it's going to hit you like a ball of wax. It's going to hit in the side of the head and you're not going to know what the heck happened unless you're paying attention to shows like this. How many other people are telling you that the sole course of all the problems that we're having right now is Austrian monetary economics kicking the butt and yanking out Keynesian economics? And the problem with Keynesian economics is they believe that one pie, regardless of the size, you can have a huge population. One pie will feed everybody. Just got to make the slices a little thinner. And how do you do that? Through government intervention, government policies. You stimulate the market over here. No, folks. When you do something over here, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? Didn't we learn that about, uh, about physics? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Same thing in finance. Okay. So, yes, geostability, instability does affect it. People wind, wind up running out of the currency issued by the government that's causing them problems and go back to the money of that country, of which the currency is then issued. So our currency is the U.S. dollar. It's issued against silver and gold as coined by our U.S. Treasury. Now, the silver and gold coined by our U.S. Treasury are eagles, both gold and silver. And for non-reporting purposes, as far as the IRS is concerned, face values up to 1,000 face of dimes, quarters, half dollars or dollars cashed in or negotiated at one time. There's no tax on this. There's not reportable. OK, because much like getting change for a dollar. If you get, take go into the bank with a paper dollar and you walk out with four quarters and those four quarters happen to be worth ten thousand dollars a piece. Regardless, is that a taxable transaction? You gave them a dollar and you got four quarters back. The answer is no. OK, now let's suppose you decide to buy Britannia's because they're pretty or you decide to buy Buffalo's because they are gorgeous, which they are. Well, sure, you're going to pay that price for that because it's going to be taxed because you didn't have the money of your country. You invested in silver as a commodity. Now, silver was a, a sovereign coin of another country. Maybe you're holding. But a silver round is simply a smaller denomination of a, a, of a commodity purchase of silver. And so, and so with gold. Now, some of you are saying, well, why don't we invest in platinum? Well, let's see. Let's go back to the Constitution here. Let's keep it simple, folks. Let's not reinvent the wheel here, okay? we got enough to think about. Does anybody see platinum on this list or copper? Okay, anybody see that there? Diamonds. Anybody see anything other than gold and silver? Oh, guess what? 
It says anything but gold and silver to be used as money in the United States. So let's just go along with the plan here. Okay, folks, let's not try and get smart with this. Let's stick to the plan. Let's get the wealth in your hands. And then what we'll do is then you can go out and shop for all the pretty stuff. Okay. So please, if you learned something here so far, please hit the like button. The, the uh, algorithms calculate the percentage of people that are watching versus the, the percentage of people that say they like it. So the way you hit like here is you got to hit the thumbs up button. So uh, also, if you think this is something that you'd rat, like to see on a regular basis, you can always say no at a per, per another time. We're working very hard to make sure that we don't repeat any of this information or, or we're, we're, we're making sure that if we do have to repeat something because the concepts are rather difficult for most people to pick up, we're giving enough other nuggets in there for those of you that are, that are menses out there that, uh, that pick up on stuff the first time around, pick up on some stuff that uh, you hadn't quite heard before. So are there any restrictions or regulations when it comes to holding silver in an IRA? No, you can hold as much as you want. Uh, you can hold as much stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or you can decide to hold a proxy for silver, um, which is SLV, or better proxy for silver, which is PSLV, or you can actually hold the real stuff yourself. Now, a lot of you are buying what are called Dory bars. They're directly from the mine. They don't weigh a thousand, a thousand ounces. They weigh something less than a thousand ounces. They must be refined to get to a point where they can actually be used and turned into planchets or rounds. Okay. So if you have bought silver bars and you were sold, you bought thousand ounce bars, I suggest you get at least one of them weighed and call up the company you bought it from. Say, look, can you take, pick one off the shelf? They probably don't even have them there and weigh it for me. You're going to see that it's going to weigh uh, under nine, as anywhere between 950 ounces to 1,040, but guess how many ounces it's, guess on what side 1,000 is going to typically fall underneath. So there's one fellow that decided to have three of his bars sent and uh, assayed, weighed, and it turns out he was, uh, I think, about 158 ounces short. You paid for 1,000 ounces. He paid for 3,000 ounces. He got 150 ounces short. So anyway, that's the way it works when you're dealing with uh, big raw bars like that. And I would ask what other products these people are, are selling. What else can they do besides sell you a mining bar? From what I understand, the one company that I'm aware of right now, all they do is sell Dory bars. So one size shoots, fits all, and that's what you get. That's not financial planning. That's not estate planning. It's not retirement planning. It works. What are the advantages of investing in physical silver coins or bars over other forms of silver, a silver investment? Well, we've sort of been over this. Again, if you invest or you're not really investing, you'd be investing if you buy bars or rounds, okay? Because that is investing in silver as a commodity. No, when you take the money that is currently in dollar form and you move it outside and you move it into silver and gold struck by the United States government, you are not investing anymore. You're taking the money off the table. The money is safe, provided that you hold it yourself and you keep your mouth shut and you sleep on top of it. That's what I would suggest. So the advantages and disadvantages of, of investing in something else is not going to is not going to mean as much for you. If what you're looking for is a maximum number of maximum amount of punch in your estate plan, now's the time to get it. Wait till all this pops, this stuff. You'll be able to buy whatever you want if you hold the money of your country. What's called the coin of the realm. Okay. What are the potential consequences of a shortage of physical silver supply in the market? Well, you tell me. You tell me. Are there any type one monster boxes left but under $22,000 for one box? Why don't you go to SD Bullion and check or JM Bullion? Or why don't you call around and see whether or see what's around? It was just one guy, me, calling out the difference between a type one and type two, just that there is a difference and that it was a 10-year contract with Honeywell that resulted in something that resulted in David um, uh, Ryder leaving his position as head of the Mint. And now we have a new director of the Mint. Her name is Ventress Gibson. She's a home, uh, she's a, not a home equity major. She's a, a, a human resource manager <laughs> and she's running the money of our country. You like that? I don't know about you, but I don't like that too much. So anyway, pawn shops. Let's get back to pawn shops here. Okay, they've actually formed. Uh, they they've actually functioned very well because the people that can't get into the economic system because their credit is lousy or they simply don't have the discipline to balance a checkbook doesn't mean they can't live. Doesn't mean they can't buy food. Doesn't mean they can't buy rent or put groceries on the table or keep heat in their house. 
there's still people, folks. We got to take care of everybody. Then the Bible said you always have the poor, right? We got to take care of them too. And it's not that hard. So the pawn shops have been around doing that. And they've been doing that for thousands of years. In the very beginning, the pawn shops were created and started over in, in China. And the people that ran them had real long beards. And the word for uh, Lombard is long beard. Okay. So these are the types of people that would run the, um, the, the pawn shops. Okay. It looks like Confucius or whatever. And what I'm pointing out here is the long beard. Because in Baltimore, we have a place called Lombard Streets down in the block. Okay, it's where they do all that dance and stuff and they sell the eight ounce beers. I <laughs> guess you're drunk enough. You think it's 12 ounces, but I, <laughs> I've only been told that, folks. <laughs> I don't know. They really serve eight ounce beers. <laughs> I think they do. But from what I've been told. All right. So at anyway, Lombard Street and these other um, they, they center in this in the in the in, right in the bowels of the city to be able to deal with the poor people. Poor people come in there and uh, maybe they'll hawk or they'll, they'll pledge as collateral or their pawn, okay, uh, to pledge. Another word for pawn is to pledge. So they're going to bring their asset in there and they're going to use it as collateral for a loan because they can't get a loan from the bank. All right. Do we have any other pictures here we show? Okay. So, again, you can see the uh, um, these are the Chinese. And I'm trying to show pictures of just how this actually went down in terms of, of the pawn shops. All right. So... In the rise of the Middle Ages, pawn shops became more prevalent in Europe. They were often associated with religious institutions, such as monasteries, which used the profits to support the charitable causes. During this time, pawnbrokers were regulated by laws that protect both the lender and the borrower. The symbolism of the three balls. That's very interesting. One of the most recognizable symbols of pawn shops is the three balls that hang outside their doors. This symbol originated from the Medici family who were prominent in the Italian bankers. The three balls represented the family's coat of arms and signified their involvement in the pawnbrokering business. So how does this all relate back to silver? Because silver is money, folks. They all held it. As we learned from Dr. Uh, Pastor Norris Belcher, we learned that the, that the coin or the money that was used in the temple were the 30 pieces of silver, uh, similar to that, that... Um, that Judas was paid in order to betray Jesus. So the, the, the money that was used was in fact silver and it's been money used as a long time. For those of you that are a little confused on this, there's a great series out by Mike Maloney and it's on uh, YouTube and it's called the hidden secrets of money. And it's an excellent, excellent way to learn about how things, how money works, how it's created, how it's sold, how it's marketed, um, how it, how it runs its life force and um, it, it's something I think that you should learn. Uh, but anyway, it's very easy. Again, when you want to go to YouTube and go to do a research on the hidden secrets of money, it's a 10 episode part. And Mike Maloney does a great job of outlining the whole thing. So um, do we have any questions that people have? Because if not, I'd like to get into, into what's going on with the BRICS right now, because this is a really big deal. So the BRICS nations comprised of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa are looking to establish a new reserve currency backed by a basket of their respective currencies. Doesn't that seem a little fair? They want to create a reserve currency, not just the dollar. They want to include the big countries in a basket of currencies and said, look, this is what we want to have. We can include the dollar, but just not have the dollar all by itself. And I agree with that. OK, now, most of you that aren't going to get on the bus, you're going to disagree with that because that's is going to change your life, because if other countries lifestyle is going to come up, somebody else's lifestyle is going to come down. OK, and if you don't hold the money, your lifestyle is going to come down. You're going to be very sorry that you didn't pay attention. Twenty seven years of experience as a certified financial planner, certified estate planner, radio personality, in Baltimore with ING amassed a $700 million portfolio built by myself, I think, I think you might want to pay attention here. What I'm suggesting that you do is not risky because the value of silver, if you're holding it yourself, will never go to zero because there's intrinsic value in that silver. What will go to zero 100% is the paper currency that you're holding or the digital currency that you're holding. That does go to zero every time. History spells it out. So the potential currency, while under still review and development, would allow these nations to exert their economic independence while competing with the existing international financial system. The current system is dominated by the U.S. dollar, which accounts for only about 45 percent of all currency trading nowadays. It used to be 100 percent. Then it was 90 percent. So as the demand for the dollar comes down, OK, what happens to the value of the dollar? 
that's got to come down too. Why aren't we seeing that? Because all the markets are manipulated. Why is the value of silver going up faster? Because if you go and you take a look at the U.S. debt clock, you're going to see that there are 395 paper ounces of silver that's been sold for every one ounce of physical silver. So if a paper ounce of silver is selling for 2803, okay, 20, uh, 28.03, and they've collected 395 of these, that's $11,071 is what they've collected for each ounce of silver that's out there. You see that? Okay. That's what they've collected. That's what they've actually sold one ounce of physical silver for. Why don't you get yours at $31 an ounce? And if you buy Eagles, there's no tax when it does go up to $11,000 an ounce. Think I'm crazy? Let's see. Got a couple questions here. Ted once mentioned first and a second crash, the real one. Can he elaborate as to what to watch for and identify the times? Yes. The powers that be do not want you to hold what I'm telling you to hold. The powers that do not, the, the be don't want me talking to you. They don't want me on platforms that are big. And look, I'm not on big platforms. Okay. We're building our own. We have a couple of very nice guys that help give us a, give us a leg up. And um, unfortunately, we have not been invited back on their programs. Now, why is that? Because we're spewing lies? Because people hate the message? Um, what do you think? I think the people love us. I think they appreciate the truth. So anyway, there's going to be two crashes. The first reset. Well, let's call them resets, okay? The first one is going to be designed to sort of gorge the silver and gold away from you guys. Those of you that are smart enough to get it, they want to make sure that you're actually going to hold on to it. The second reset is going to be one where you're going to take the silver and the gold that you have as needed and turn that in back into the currency. Go slow with this is what I'm going to suggest, okay? Don't go hog wild and buy all the currencies and convert all the money into the currencies, okay? Now that you got the real money of your country, I suggest you hold on to it like your grandma and your grandfather, your great-grandparents did, okay? Didn't they sit down with you? Didn't they have a little blue book that they put the, uh, the dimes and the quarters, and this one was struck by this mint, and this one has this mark on it? Didn't your grandmother, grandfather, or, or great-grandmother ever play with you with any of this stuff? If they didn't, do you know anybody that did have, uh, that, that did collect coins or had to explain to them? It's not about the beauty of it, folks. It's about the money. It's about collecting and saving the money. What you're saving right now is not money. What you're saving is digits in your bank account is not money. Money is this. Money is American silver eagles. Money is gold eagles. Money is pre-65 dimes, quarters. I tell you, folks, you have this in your hand here. Oh, put this up. Might hurt the computer here. Anyway, I'm trying to get this up just so I can see it. That's a little difficult. I got a vibe board coming, folks. Anyway, you can see the eagles there, okay? All right. That's real money. You hold this stuff up. I tell you, when the first time I put it, uh, uh, $10,000 on somebody's lap back when Monster Box was only really wanting $10,000, I told them, look, this is what $10,000 feels like. And they were shocked because it's 40 some pounds, 40 some pounds. But that is the money of our country, okay? So, in 2023, one fifth of all oil trades were conducted in the U in the U.S. dollar. Interesting, huh? Or excuse me, non-U.S. dollar. So the demand for the dollar is falling, like buggy whips. What happens to the leftover buggy whips? Where do they go? What do they sell for? And who's going to use them? What are they used for? Are they to sit on somebody's table to show this is what the country was like when we had horses to run around instead of cars? Do I need to show you the currency table again? Uh, let's take a little wide over there. Okay, we got a couple of minutes, don't we? Let's take one last look at the currencies. And this time, I played a little game on you, okay? There's some currency here that you should recognize, okay? That blends in with all the other currencies. Take a look. And you want me to stop on any one of these, if you question the validity of any of this, take a look. Each one of these has an identif a unique identifier, okay? Let's start talking about these here. These are silver certificates. What happened to that? Where's the silver that these certificates were swapped for? Who has it? Do you think the banks have it? Look at this underhanded move that was made. Back around 1965, who issued this $5 bill? It looks to me it was issued by the United States note. United States of uh, United States note, right? Who was this issued by? Federal Reserve note. This one's issued by the United States of America. This one's issued by the Federal Reserve Bank. 
And they put the United States of America on it because that's the country by which the Federal Reserve provides the economic services to our country. But they don't do a real good job. As you can see, all the currencies around the face of the planet, they originally go to zero. They take the silver. Then you go back playing with silver for a while, and then they come and they spring their game back up again. So even if you beat it this time, folks, your children, your grandchildren, somewhere along the line, you're going to find that they're going to try this trick again. Oh, look what we find here. This $20 bill sort of fits right in with the rest of them. It's only a matter of time, folks, isn't it? It's only a matter of time. I hope you see this. I hope you hit the like button. I hope you hit the subscribe button. And I hope you tell people about this. And I hope you, you don't make the same mistake that these other people made. 89 times is the number of individual currencies that I have on my table, meaning that people have been swindled 89 times. Are you going to be the 90th? You have to get out. Okay. So why do the BRICS want to create a new currency? They're sick and tired of having to create and to, to deal with the United States dollar. We create it on a keyboard and they have to work for it. That's not fair. We have some of the highest standard of living in the world right now. I mean, take a look at our poor people. They're, they're well fed. They're eating the fudge rounds and everything else. They're not missing a meal. Other countries, they're starving. Ethiopia, goodness gracious. Folks, if you don't get on the bus, if you don't get on board with this, if it doesn't make sense, reach out to me. If what I'm telling you does not make sense, please send me an email and ask me for a private consultation. I'll, I will take the time by phone and I'll explain it to you. Okay. And when we finish our conversation, you will understand it. And you'll probably get a couple of laughs too, because economics can be fun. I think I'm showing you that. So they want to create a new currency because they want, uh, they want an even playing field. And isn't that what President Trump had said? We need an even playing field across the, the world. No more the United States having to protect themselves using military. Either you do what we say, we're going to shoot you in the head. That was all about the opium wars. That, that's how the English got, the, um, got the, uh, the Chinese to go out and create and mine silver in what are called tails, T-A-E-L-S. And they got them hooked on opium called the opium wars. So they pick up the opium in India for a song and a dance, take it to China, get the people hooked on opium. And then the only way they can get their fixes is they trade it for silver that they mined in the fields all day long. That's the way it worked. The nasty people, folks, I'm telling you, got to stay away from that. So at any rate, um, in 19, in April 20, 22nd, April 2022, the U.S. dollar was used in only 88% of all currency exchanges. See, it used to be 100%. Now it's 80 some percent. But see, we're looking at what's called a crack up boom in reverse. We're going to reach something called terminal velocity. And what this means is that all of a sudden, whammo, the bottom's going to drop out. Okay. And uh, when this happens, it's, that's what's going to be the first reset. But if you're holding silver, shut the heck up. Don't tell anybody you have it. If you have any questions, call me, reach out to me, send me a text, okay? Don't get rid of any of the silver. I'll be coming out with some reports. Stay tuned. Share this message, would you please? Share this message with your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, people you care about. Um, it'll help them to understand what's happening, it, and it will definitely help them a lot of heartache. We all read stories about what happened during the Great Depression, people jumping out of skyscrapers. Many people associate their whole persona with the amount of wealth that they have. Well, folks, I've been out on the bay and I've been told that, oh, this guy's a billionaire here and this one's a billionaire over there. That kind of stuff doesn't impress me. Now, if somebody told me, hey, this guy's got three tons of American silver eagles or this guy's got five tons of junk silver or this one has a ton of American silver eagles or whatever. Ooh, now, that's impressive. Wouldn't that impress you? So you're able to collect a whole bunch of digital dollars that aren't worth anything in a, in, a, in a computer program on a screen that you have on your computer. Where Where's the real value in that? It can go as quickly as it came. So at any rate, what we're seeing is the BRICS country have had enough. And what they've done is they've created an alternative transfer system um, to accommodate, uh, to actually do battle against SWIFT. SWIFT is the one that we've been using called the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications, SWIFT. Okay. Then what happened was China came out and said, look, we're tired of this stuff. We're going to come up with our own payment platform. So they call and came up with the CIPS, the Chinese Interbank Payment System. Then what happened? Other countries woke up and said, hey, China, we like what you're doing. Can we do too? Then China said, you know what? This makes a lot of sense. 
let's open it to help other countries. So they change it from the Chinese interbank payment system to the cross-border interbank payment system. Then they came up with the AAIB, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, in order to provide some type of, um, of, of service that the World Economic Bank or the, or the World Bank was performing. Okay, So they've got all the infrastructure there. And the programs, the, uh, the, both these uh, trading platforms, SWIFT and CIPS, have been running in tandem with one another. Is there gold eagle? Oh, yes. Oh, who said this? I love to win. I, lo <laughs> I love you too. My goodness. Is there gold eagle monster boxes? Well, you bet your sweet biffy there are. <laughs> yes, there are. But I am not going to buy a monster box of American gold eagles when I can get 88 monster box of American silver eagles and I'll take a couple of them back and I'll get all the daggone gold eagles that I want with a fraction number silver eagles. So I know about arbitrage people. We'll make it real simple. Just get on board, get your mug, support what we're doing. Please like, share, subscribe. All right, do this, please. All right, I'll see you through this. The prices you're going to get on the metals are rock bottom. You're not paying anything for the advice. I'm not trying to sell you some overpriced, obscure $7,000 quarter ounce gold coins. No, you need to be holding something people know and feel and can understand and have recognition with. The American Gold Eagle is the world's most widely, an American Silver Eagle, is the world's most widely recognized one ounce pure sovereign, three nines pure round, okay, sovereign coin. In the United States, it's known. It's it's very easily looked up. Matter of fact, I got together with some old buddies of mine. I hadn't seen them since 1980 when I graduated from college from James Madison. And uh, so I, I went there because, you know, I had a YouTube program later on today. And so I, I brought a tube of American Eagles to show these guys what's going on. And they said, wow, I saw this. My grandmother. Well, the waitress told me, well, if I wanted a glass of water, I had to go out and get it myself at the service station. Said, my God, this is a restaurant here? It's called the Vienna Inn. No kidding. So the lady came by and the waitress came by again. She said, oh, you didn't get your water. I said, I thought this was a restaurant. She said, honey, let me go get you the water. Everybody, it's a thing here. If you go to the Vienna Inn, Vienna, Virginia, you're supposed to get up and go to your own water and soda and everything. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that when I go to a restaurant. You know, went in Rome, but I'm not in Rome. <laughs> I'm in Ted. Hey, speaking about Ted, get yourself a Ted head, Ted hat, a Ted head hat. Check it out. They're on the internet right now. It's on the go to tedspeaks.net and take a look at it. We got the mugs up. We have the hats up. The mugs are ready to go right now. The hats are in pre-order. I'm waiting for samples to come in because I only want the best for you guys. I really do. That's why I'm out here doing this. And I put a lot of work into these one of these programs. And I only want the best for you guys. I hope you see that. Okay. So if you would like, share and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. We need to get this message out to more people than just those you know, few thousand we have here. This message has to be seen by everyone that's in the United States. I think this message needs to be seen by everyone that has money inside of any fiat currency system around the world. We are getting results and we are getting inquiries from Japan, uh, from, um, from uh, Norway, Sweden, Austria, Australia. Here, look, this is where they're coming from. Look at this. These people don't speak our language for the most part. South Africa? People, what you're learning isn't being told to you on any face of the planet. This program, this knowledge should be getting out as far and wide as possible. Take it. Send it out in an email. Say, hey, take a look at this guy. Does he make any sense to you? Check it around. Okay? But I'm telling you, I put enough study into this thing. There's no rabbit hole that I haven't gone down in this. I know what's going on. There is no way in the world at my age with my inheritances and all that I've done that I would make a mistake at this point in time. That's not going to happen. Hey, Ped, what do you say to the poor people who want silver but cannot afford it? What I think you should do is maybe go around and collect some. Uh, do they still have returnable Coke bottles or something or whatever? An eagle is only going to cost you $33. Golly days. If you go into McDonald's and you buy a Big Mac for you and your wife and a couple of drinks and some some french fries i mean just where's the health potential in that you're over 30 some dollars there right away so why don't you go to the grocery store buy something healthy go and eat some carrots and and get some real ground beef make your own hamburger save yourself the money and put the balance at the at their two or three meals put it and buy another eagle it only takes one folks my lord folks you need one 
The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step, right? Okay. So don't tell me how, how, how poor you are. We're all poor. We're, nobody has more money than they know what to do with. It's doing it's anything legal. Okay. So please um, don't use that as an excuse. Don't make excuses. Make reasons. Okay. Whenever, when, somebody once told me, Ted, you know what one of these are? It's a negative sign. You're going to see them all over the place. They're everywhere. Anybody says, oh, well, it's a lousy day. This, that. Oh, this isn't so good or whatever. What I'm telling you, if you put enough thought behind it, you can make a negative and always make a positive out of it. Okay? Let's take out these mirror things. So if you put enough thought, in it, yeah, it's a lousy day outside. You know, <laughs> a good thing we have some rain coming. The grass certainly needs it. Look at the flowers. The crocus are about ready to come up. There's always a bright side. You just got to think a little bit, okay? Right now, you're seeing everything falling apart. You don't know what to do. I'm telling you, the problem is upstream from where you're looking. You're not looking in the right place. The problem is Austrian monetary economics has taken out Keynesian economics. And what that means to you is the money around the world is going to change. Every country is going to go back to having their own sovereign country, currency. It's going to be gold for international trade and silver for the people. That's the way it's going to be. And that's the way it was 3000 BC up to 1871 AD when we got taken off the silver standard here. And basically the power of the people was removed. But if you remember President Trump's inauguration, the first one that he had, he said he's returning the power to the people. That's us. And how do you do that? You return the power to the people with the money. You return the power to the people with the Constitution. You don't have a two-tiered justice system. You don't have a two-tiered financial system. You have a one-tiered, one thinks for all. No one's above the law. Everyone, equal opportunity for everyone, right? That's what I believe. There are a lot of smart people out there. Everyone's been given a talent. We learned from Dr. Paris, Dr. Uh, Pastor Norris that a talent a long time ago in biblical times was meant as a, as silver. So a talent was a weight of silver, an extremely large amount of silver. So if you've been given a God-given talent, whatever that is, to heal people, to help people, to speak to people, to comfort people, to make people, whatever, everybody's been given a talent. You just got to find it, okay? And that talent is silver. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not making this stuff up. I wasn't this high on silver until I understood what the heck was going on. I was like you. I believed the Keynesian economics was the end all be all. That was all there was. And then Bob Mangle Sr. opened my eyes and he said, hey, you're going to give me this and I'm going to give you a piece of paper with ink on it. And that's what started it all for me. And that's what it will end with you all. So, folks, I want to say some for another time. We've been on the phone uh, talking with you for a while now. In closing, what I'd like to do is please pass the word. Get away from the dollar. Get into the real money. The dollar is failing. It's rotted. It's created by a private company. The private company is bankrupt. I showed you before that the Federal Reserve is actually running a deficit. They're losing money for the first time since 1913 when they were founded. What else was founded in 1913? How about the IRS? And what does that spell? T-H-E-I-R-S. What does T-H-E-I-R-S spell? Tell me. Type it out on one of the um, uh, one of the comment boards here. Spell out T-H-E-I-R-S and tell me what it spells. Theirs, right? Interesting. It's right in front of our face, the IRS. And justice system, just for us. Interesting. It's all around, and, uh, and the Great Awakening is making us aware of this. So, folks, God bless you all. Thanks for, uh, for tuning in. Thanks for all the support. I really appreciate the kind comments. That's all we're in here for, folks. Uh, my wife and I are putting a lot of time into this. Of course, you got to do something with your time. At 65, we've got another 20 years to go easy, don't you think? <laughs> so if you enjoy the content and you want it to be more, send some nice notes. Hit the like, share, and subscribe button and come back and see us. Uh, we'll have another program up real shortly. And uh, if anything groundbreaking comes up, believe me, I'll be out there right away. In the meantime, if there's another podcasting station you think that would like to have me on there, or you can ask them to have a dead chat on their station, please ask them. Um, I've asked many of them, and I've, uh, it's fallen on, on deaf ears. But if you would ask, um, I'd appreciate it. Now, if any of you would like to make any donations or whatever, uh, we're accepting donations just for marketing, and we're taking donations for merchandise. So there are people out there that can't afford a nice shirt. So we're getting very, very nice heavyweight cotton shirts. And uh, we're going to try to keep, the, we are keeping the price down. I think they're going to be around $26 for the type of shirt that you're going to get. 100% cotton, 
I think it's a seven ounce. I don't know how they weigh that, but it's a pretty heavy shirt. Uh, it's, and it, black is what we're going to be doing. So it'll keep you warm out in the sun. And, uh, and then you'll have a white hat that'll say Ted Head on it. And, uh, of course, you got your coffee mug and you're all ready to go. That and a cup of Coney coffee. And we're sitting on the beach somewhere very soon. I hope you join me. God bless you all. Till next time.